guys, I am heading to a call of insufficient heat. We had a pretty low temperature last night. It was I think between 10 and 12 degrees, depending on where you were at. And we had a call this morning that one of our customers' house, it was about 50 degrees. So it's a heat pump. He said the heat pump was running. There's no ice on it, no issues like that. So we're gonna look toward heat strip failure because he said he didn't think the heat strips were coming on. So we're gonna take a look. See what's right, guys, going on. we have our Honeywell Vision Pro here. You're gonna turn the system on to emergency heat. It's on 69, so it comes on. You see the little red light right here. We're gonna go see if the heat strips come on. Well, we'll see if the blower comes on as well because the sequencer will bring on the blower whenever it brings on the heat strips. So we'll wait a second to see if it comes on while I'm moving some Christmas stuff Here's out of the way. Air handler. We're gonna take it apart, take a look on the inside, see if there's amperage going through the heater. See if what we have here is we have 10 kW heat strips running, 39.9 amps. And we do have a fan signal coming from the thermostat, 24 volts. So the fan comes on as soon as we turn it into emergency heat as well power sent to the sequencer. However, it's taken a very long time to bring that sequencer on, so we're going to shut it off and try it again, but before it was several minutes, which means it probably isn't coming on at all during defrost, um, and on a cold night like last night, it's a very big issue if that's the case. I am waiting for the emergency heat to come back on. I removed the G-wire coming back from the thermostat that has 24 volts because I want to see how long it'll take for the sequencer to bring the fan on and heat strips. It should be about 20 or 30 seconds. We're well beyond that already. We're about two minutes along. So I want to see how long it takes if they come on at all because they did come on. So I want to see how long it takes each time so we can replace that sequencer and then see if we can improve that score. As you can bit. see we have 28 volts. We're going from a common I found inside the unit to out here on the outside there's the old emergency heat wire which has been dangling outside the unit for 15 years bare uh, that brown emergency heat wire meets the auxiliary heat wire on the inside of the unit so you can get your reading from either one of those two wires as you can see right here the two wires come together on the sequencer control voltage so you can test voltage on either one of those so we've had the signal for quite a while now. I have the timer on. We're going to add about two minutes to whatever time we have there to get our actual time waiting. This is our sequencer. Our control voltage on the bottom, high voltage on the first and second stack, one for each this top stack, middle stack, one for each row of elements. 10 kW. See a little burnt on this wire here. We're gonna take all these off. We'll remake this wire and put the new sequence. Alright guys, we're looking at our old sequencer here, kind of dangling in place. That's why we call it a double stack. You see it's two rows high. Sometimes you'll have one that looks like this. It's a single stack 5kW. We have the control voltage on the bottom coming in. Brown and white on one side and our red and blue on the other is the commons. This is our 24 volts for auxiliary or emergency heat. On the top two rows, there'll be high voltage. On this side, coming in from the lugs, we'll have these red wires here. And on the top, the other red wire just jumpers over to the infamous Goodman fan motor relay. On the other side, this red wire goes down to the limit switch on the heat kit. This red wire on the back also does that. And the brown wire goes over to the Goodman fan motor relay. So. That's pretty much it. We're going to take it off wire for wire and put it on the new sequencer. Hopefully, If you guys had noticed, the sequencer that I'm taking out, you see it's already broken in half. And the rods have fallen out of it. I had two terminals on each side at the top. Now the one I put in only has one terminal on this side. Now what we're going to do with that extra red wire, since it was a jumper that came from the top of the old sequencer over to the infamous Goodman blower relay, and the other side of that went to the lugs. We're just going to take this red wire directly back to the lugs, sort of cut out the middleman, uh, simplify it anyway, and then we can start this thing back up and see if we have our heat strips performing like they should, coming on in a time. Here we have the old sequencer. You can kind of see the different parts of it. There's the bottom section where the control voltage goes. You can see the disc inside, the bimetal disc. What will happen is that disc will flex, 
will push up on one of these rods inside. See, they go in these holes, and when they push up, they'll make a circuit. So that's what happens with the uh, sequencers. And there's two rods, but I, I lost one of them. But you get the idea. So this one kind of fell apart when I was taking it apart, so I figured I would kind of show you guys what's inside of one. But that's about it. They're pretty simple. Uh, we're about to start things back up. And hopefully we'll be good to go. I'll put the amp clamp on it. We'll keep the green wire separated so we can see how long it takes for the sequencer to come on. Hopefully not too long. Okay, guys, we're going to turn the temperature back up. And I'm going to start with the timer to see how long it takes. As you can see, it started much quicker than before. 40 seconds definitely beats 10 minutes. Because remember, the 8-minute time had two extra minutes before I actually started the timer. So... Much better, much, much better. Uh, I'm going to go put the greens back together in a minute. I suspended the transform up a little bit better than before. It was sitting at the bottom of the cabinet. And took that brown wire out that was going the old emergency heat wire because it really it made it up with the auxiliary heat wire on the inside. So there was no real need for having two wires. So we removed that wire just to take away the confusion. And it was dangling outside the cabinet bare anyway, so it was just going to short out eventually and blow the transformer. But there we go. We seem to be running well. We're at 45 amps. Have a happy day, and I will see you guys on the next.